Cabrera, welcome to Demon Land. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm Jason Pugh. I'm the Assistant AD for Media Relations here at Northwestern State. There's two mic setups a little bit uh, over my head. I apologize if I sound a little rough, I'm battling a cold right now, but uh, today is not about me. Today is about a man who has come in to take us through Groundhog Day a little bit. It was almost a year ago we were doing the same thing, but had a lot of success with that one. Hopefully there's a lot of success left to come. Uh, our president, Dr. Jones, was supposed to send a video. He's uh, somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean or heading to France or uh, a little bit tied up. But I know from talking with Dr. Jones and talking about Rick Cabrera, uh, he's very excited, as we all are, to welcome Coach Cabrera here. And Coach, I know he sends his best from uh, across the pond. Uh, so in lieu of Dr. Jones, we'll turn things over to a guy who's been running around for the past oh, 13, 14 months, a lot like Jim Valvano was looking to hug somebody in Houston uh, 40 years ago after they won the title. So uh, your proud NC State grad, your prouder Northwestern State Athletic Director, Kevin Boston. I did that last night at the, at the, when I was picking them up at the airport. I ran around. Uh, with him taking my heck off and, and I give him a hug. Now, I appreciate everybody coming today. Um, this is an exciting day for Northwestern State and Northwestern State Athletics and, and specifically the men's basketball program. Um, I'd like to thank all the donors, fans, staff, university administration, and any of the student athletes that are here today. Um, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Jones uh, and the search committee for their support uh, during this process. Uh, I would also like to thank Kyle Bowlesby with Bowlesby Sports Advisors for the many hours and late nights with us in the coordination uh, for Canada interviews and, re and prospect research. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, Coach Gibson and his staff for the success the program had this past year. And because of that success is why we had such a great pool of candidates uh, this year for, for this position. Um, and obviously, I want to thank the family, Danielle, Michaela, uh, Jaden, Braxton, and Landon, welcome to Natchitoches, welcome to the NSU. Uh, I think y'all are going to do great things here and be a really big part of the community, and I know the community is going to support you all. Um, I know it's, it's been a wild journey as, as getting into college athletics and, and traveling around with him from place to place, but I know you'll find a sense of home and, and community here, so thank y'all for coming. We appreciate that. The process was quick but it was deliberate and thorough. We reviewed the bios and resumes of over 30 candidates, which included D1 head coaches, D2 head coaches, Power 5 assistant coaches, and G5 assistant coaches. As I, men as I mentioned earlier, the interest was really, really strong uh, with the pool that we had. As we went through the search process, it was clear that Coach Cabrera possessed all the qualities that we desired in a head coach. We wanted somebody who was an elite recruiter, and a developer of young men, not only on the court, but off it as well. We wanted someone that could fit the culture of Northwestern State, his experience, passion, enthusiasm, energy, and hands in the dirt approach, and grinded out work ethic were a perfect match for Northwestern State. I have known Rick for about 12 years. We both worked together at a previous institution, and I've followed his career ever since, and have been impressed with what he has accomplished in the collegiate world. He has coached at two different junior colleges, Lackawanna, did I pronounce that right? And Tallahassee Community College, where he has, has an overall record of 152 and 45. That's about a 75% winning clip, which is pretty, pretty, pretty stout. He led Tallahassee Community College to the D1 Junior College Final Four this year. In between those two stops, he's been a Division I uh, assistant coach at UT Chattanooga, Tennessee Tech, Austin P, and Arkansas State. He has recruited and developed numerous all-conference players and NBA players. Rick played at Tennessee Tech and was the team's MVP his senior year. He graduated in 1999 with a Bachelor of Science in Multidisciplinary Studies. He received his master's degree in Instructional Leadership from Tennessee Tech in 2001. So it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you all fans, donors, staff, community members, university members, Northwestern State's 11th men's basketball coach, Rick Cabrera. Wow, 
what a day to be a demon, huh? We are officially on demon time. Um, first and foremost, uh, you know, I would like to thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me this opportunity. Uh, without him, uh, you know, I would not be here. Um, uh, you know, secondly, you know, I would like to thank, uh, you know, our director of athletics, Kevin Boschin, and, uh, you know, and Dr. Jones, uh, Kyle Bowlesby, and our committee. Um, there are 363 of these jobs, and, you know, for them to believe in my vision, you know, and what I could bring to the table, uh, that means the world to me. Uh, you know, I, I give you advice. If you ever have someone of, you know, you know, of power give you a position of power, please uh, cherish that moment, you know, because these, you know, opportunities don't come by too often. So I thank you so much. Um, uh, to my family, my wife, uh, Danielle, Um, gosh, uh, my daughter Michaela, my son Jaden Braxton Landon, thank you. Uh, so 16, 17 years ago, we went on our first date and um, it, it, uh, I tell you, we were probably dating probably about a month. And I knew this is what I wanted to do. Um, so, so during that date, we were at an Italian restaurant. It's called Fratelli's. And we're sitting across from each other. And uh, you know, like I told her, I said, listen, I said, this is the profession I want to go into. Um, and it's going to entail some traveling, some moving. Uh, she had just graduated from Penn State. She's very close to her family up in, you know, in uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania. So I wanted just to give her just a heads up to see, hey, do you want to come along on this ride? Or if not, you can get out early. <laughs> um, and she looked across with her, you know, with her big blue eyes and said, I'm in. And uh, you know, 17 years later, we've been all over the place. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, like I appreciate you for being with me. Uh, you know, she gave up her career uh, you know, as an athletic trainer. Uh, you know, she went to school, got a degree in kinesiology, and, um, and she hasn't done anything with it on that, on that end of athletic training. She's a teacher now. Uh, you know, so, you know, like, I appreciate you more than you ever know. Uh, you know, you know, I want to say thank you to my sister, Ayana, uh, my other sister, Lamia, who's not here, uh, my two brothers, uh, Damon and Javier, um, you know, and my family and friends that are watching right now. I love you guys. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, all right. Um, uh, to the Tallahassee community, uh, I know you guys are watching. Um, it, it, you know, it's been two years. Um, it, you know, it, it feels like 12 years. Uh, you know, I met so many people there, um, uh, grasped so many friendships. You know, to my players, uh, you know, thank you. Um, you know, coaches get a lot of credit, but I don't score a ball, I don't block a shot, I don't make an assist. Um, now, I know I have some other things I need to do as a coach, but, but I appreciate everything that they have done for me. Um, you know, I know my resume is just not Tallahassee, but I don't think without their success, I may not be here. I don't know that. Um, you, you know, so I thank you guys so much. Um, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, like a quote, that has always stuck in my head, you know, and I wrote it down. It says, a good coach uh, needs a patient wife or husband, a loyal dog, and a great post player, but not necessarily in that order. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you know, I definitely have uh, a two of the three in a, in a patient wife and a loyal dog, you know, and I have a great post player coming, so just wait and see, all right? <laughs> Um, I want to give a huge thanks to, you know, to all the previous coaches that have been through this uh, a great university, all the way from uh, Lee Prather, uh, you know, to J.D. Barnett, to Mike McConathy, uh, you know, you know, and, you know, the person who I'm taking over, uh, Corey Gibson, who I've known for a long time. Um, you know, uh, Mike McConathy is, uh, you know, a guy that I followed in my Division I uh, career. Uh, he, you know, he was a heck of a coach. 
you know, one of my assistant coaches who was in this league last year, uh, you know, he came up to me in my first year at Tallahassee. It was in the middle of the season. We were struggling on, you know, on getting some offense, you know, early in the shot clock. And uh, he came up to me, he said, he said, Coach, listen, okay, I was at Southeastern Louisiana. He said, that coach at Northwestern State, I can't remember his name, but he had an unbelievable secondary break. You know, a roll and replace secondary break. You know, and they scored really quickly. Like, uh, I mean, at some point they led the country in scoring or, or they led the league in scoring. Maybe we should do this. So, I, you know, I don't have an ego. I steal from everybody, <laughs> from coaches. So I said, okay, let's try it. I said, let's try. I said, you know, you know as a head coach, I'm going to allow you to put it in. Um, and, uh, and he put it in, and, and our, our offense was like pop. You know, you know it changed in, uh, you know, in a day. So uh, uh, thank you, Coach McConaughey. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, I mean, like, your legacy is still here. You know, as an assistant coach, you know, I watched you win a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, to talking to you in the, in the, you know, in the extreme near future. Sorry. Um, my dream job. You know, it's being here, you know, you know, as your head coach. Um, when I lay down at night, when I decided to get into coaching, I lay down at night and said, I want to be a Division I head basketball coach. And this is my first opportunity, so this is my dream job. Um, and I'm so greatly appreciative of having this opportunity. Like I said earlier, 363. I bet the applicants were time nine of that 363 to get this job. And, uh, you know, I had people believe in me uh, that I was the next man uh, to win an NCAA tournament, you know, game. And, and just watching a Fairleigh Dickinson, you know, in Florida Atlantic, I say, why not us? Um, you know, and that's the attitude you got to have. Um, uh, to the state of Louisiana, the state of Louisiana has actually been pretty good to me at, at some point in my life. Um, you know, as a young man in high school, uh, I used to go to LSU basketball camps all the way from New York City. All right, because that's where I'm from. I apologize for not saying that. Um, and Dale Brown is a, is, a, is a great friend. He's not a good friend. Um, I talked to him for 20 minutes this morning. He's 87 years old, and he's kicking live and talking, you know, like as he did when he was 45. Um, but when I was, uh, you know, in New York City, Dale Brown was great friends with my dad. You know, and my dad got him a, a player by the name of Jose Vargas from Dominican Republic. So Dale Brown said, hey, bring your son to camp. So I, I went as my freshman year, my sophomore year, my junior year, my senior year. And uh, one thing that I noticed was, was the heat in Baton Rouge is unbelievable. Because <laughs> it was the whole month of June. Um, you know, but Dale Brown is a mentor. He's always been good to me. Um, you know, like he's recommended me for a lot of jobs. And, and you know, like, I, Coach, if you're watching this, thank you. I told you thank you this morning, but thank you again. Um, uh, you know, I know that the food here is extremely, extremely good. Um, you know, I had a little bit, I mean, a little taste of it this morning, but, but I'm going to let you guys know up front, it, you know, if you recommend any food, I'm allergic to shellfish. I'm glad that wasn't in the job requirement. So, uh, <laughs> um, yes, yes. But my family isn't, they just look at me like, oh, well, but, uh, but let me give you a little bit about my coaching background. Um, you know, I coached for my dad at Miami Killian High School. It was my first job out of grad school. Um, I take that back. I was a GA under Jeff Lebo, who's the assistant coach at North Carolina right now, uh, you know, for two years. And then I, I coached for my dad at Miami Killian. I got my first college job at Keystone College. You know, I was a dorm director and I was an assistant coach. And I'll never forget this. I, I told my wife this a couple nights ago. I said, I wish I, uh, um, kept the pay stub that I had from Keystone College, but I remember it with, with, uh, with taxes taken out, and this was in 02. Um, it was $159.38 just for the coaching stipend. It, it was every two weeks, so just do the math. And like, I'll never forget this. I, you, I mean, I was fresh out of college. I said, I have a master's degree. What am I doing? <laughs> but it's all about patience. And, uh, you know, throughout this business, it, you know, I mean, it has paid off. It has allowed me to, to take care of myself and my family. Uh, so I coached at Keystone, and then uh, at the age of 28, I was, a lot, I was offered a, you know, 
uh, to be a head coach at Lackawanna College, which at the time was a very prestigious junior college in Scranton, Pennsylvania. It's the home of the office. If you watch the office, um, Scranton, Pennsylvania, that's it. All right. So I was there for four years. We had great success. Um, you know, had a lot of guys going to Division One as well. You know, and then I got my opportunity at the age of 32 to uh, 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 to fulfill a dream and be a Division One assistant. Uh, you know, at Tennessee Chattanooga, I spent there four years. I went to my alma mater, Tennessee Tech, where I played. Uh, I was an assistant there for five years, as well as an associate head coach. Um, then after that, I went to Austin P. Uh, for two years, and then Arkansas State for two years, and then Tallahassee for two years, and now I'm here. Uh, so all in a nutshell, uh, you know, of my coaching. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. You're definitely going to keep me longer than that. Um, one thing that you're going to notice about my team is that, you know, the word culture is, is used a lot, uh, you know, when coaches get up here. And it's not a bad thing. But I like to use the word chemistry. Uh, you know, we're going to have great chemistry in the community, in, in, on the team, with each other, with the administration, um, you know, with the staff. Um, you know, chemistry is extremely important. There's going to be some rough days. It's going to be some days we don't agree with each other. It's going to be some days the team doesn't like me, uh, you know, but, but I'd rather them love me than like me, uh, you know. So, but, but to have great chemistry, you know, it's, you know, I mean, it's almost like a marriage. In, in my marriage, we have great chemistry. Uh, you know, we don't always agree with each other, you know, but we always come back to each other and say, hey, let's get this right. So that's how my team is going to be. Uh, you know, and that's my word, you know, other than culture. Um, are we going to have it in the classroom with our professors, with our advisors, um, with compliance? I mean, it's a non-negotiable, all right? Um, you know, like I said, I don't score a basket or get a rebound, but I control those other things that I mentioned off the court. Um, you know, from a recruiting perspective, we're going to recruit high character, tough and talented and everyday dudes. And that's what I call them, bring everyday dudes. You know, everyday guys that when things are going bad, can you still bring it? Can you still bring it? I've learned that through in the coaching profession. There were times where I was frustrated and there were times where I didn't want to get out the bed, but I had to be an everyday coach and I, I have to practice what I preach. And I need my young men to be everyday dudes in every facet of being a, uh, uh, a student athlete here at Northwestern State University. Um, you know, I heard the great Jimmy Dyke say one time, I think he was watching Middle Tennessee State University play, and it was just maybe about 10, 12 years ago, and he was watching how tough they played, and he said they are tougher than a tough team. And that quote has stuck out with me for, for over a decade, and that's what you're going to see you know, on that court in that arena, a tough team. Tough teams that aren't tough don't win, and that's been proven. A tough team, uh, it's going to be gritty, it's going to be fun, we're going to play at a high pace, uh, you know, we're going to have some control. Uh, you know, I tell my guys, I say, guys, I say, you got to play in fear defensively. On a defensive end, you play in fear. You have to play the objective of the game of basketball is to what? It's to stop the other team from putting that orange basketball in that orange rim. But it's also uh, for us to put the orange basketball in that orange rim. But on the defensive side, you know, if you stop them from putting it in the rim, that means you're getting rebounds and you are playing fast and playing in transition. If you're constantly taking the ball out of bounds, you're playing bad defense. And that's not going to be us. Um, I, you know, I can promise you that. I control that on, def on, you know, on the defensive end. You know, offensively, I don't want my guys to play scared. I want them to play relaxed. You know, I want them to, to not have to look at me and worry about me. I want them to be able to miss a shot and say, okay, I know coach is about to sub me out. Now, if you turn the ball over, you're coming out. Um, <laughs> that one. Uh, but from an offensive perspective, I want them to, you know, because I would be a hypocrite. I was a player. I didn't like it. So why would I want my players to do the same? Um, but most importantly, you know, I would want them to play together and play through adversity. That is the toughest thing of collegiate athletes and even high school athletes is when things go wrong, how do you handle those things? How do you handle it? Even to this day, uh, you know, it's a struggle. They don't want to do bad and, you know, and they don't want to get yelled at. You know, but it's my job to help them, you know, to control those emotions and let it go and, and, and keep moving and, and, you know, become better players. Um, to the community of Natchitoches, um, where's the camera at? Right there. 
and, and to you guys. I, I, I'm here for you. Uh, I promise you that. Um, that is something that is a gift of mine. Uh, I'm not a couch potato. I'm not an office guy. Uh, you know, I'm going to be out and about. You know, you know, I'm here for you. I have to serve you if I expect you to serve our team. Um, it's a two-way street. And you know, I promise, I don't make a lot of promises, but I promise that I'll be involved. If you need me, please, please reach out uh, you know, to any one of these men here. You know, I'll make it happen. You know, if I can't do it on, on, on a certain time, just be patient with me. Uh, you know, but to the community, I'm here for you. I promise you that. Um, I will be heavily involved. Um, and, you know, and like I said, whatever is needed, you know, pending the schedule, you know, I'll be here. Uh, to the uh, student athletes, um, you know, and to the, the other coaches that are here, uh, we will be involved in your sporting events. Um, it's something I've always done, even as an assistant coach. You know, even for guys that I worked for that weren't really, ah, it's, you don't have to go. Uh, we're going. Um, you know, we're going uh, because, you know, if I expect you to come to my games, uh, I have to do the same for you. But because it's just the right thing to do. You know, why not be together? Why do we have to be so divisive? Um, you know, are we going to root for each other? We all, it's, it's a we here. Uh, you know, we all want to win. Uh, so, so expect to see me. I'm a huge football guy. I played college baseball as well. Um, you know, I play tennis on my free time. I love golf. So you're going to see me. You're going to be like, man, this dude is weird. He's here all the time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and most importantly, you're going to see my players. Um, to the students on campus, to the fraternities, sororities, I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm coming for you. All right? You're going to see me in the cafeteria. I'm one of those guys that will stand on a chair with a bullhorn and, you know, and announce an event, a game. Um, you know, I'll bring pieces, pizzas to the sororities and fraternities. I, I'm, I'm all for it, or, uh, you know, and, and it's not a bluff. It's, it's, it's genuine. Uh, you know, so expect me to, uh, uh, to be there for you guys. Uh, for my staff, I'm going to hire a high-level staff. You know, uh, I'm going to hire some guys that are hungry, that, that knows what it takes to win at this landscape, uh, you know, that are going to bring in high-character young men that are going to represent themselves you know, in a high character way in this community. Uh, you know, the vetting process uh, for my staff was very easy. Um, I have to trust, you know, uh, you know, I don't want my staff to, uh, to put me in a position to fire them or them fire me. You know, so I trust my staff and I'm excited for them to get here and, and uh, you know, and be a part of a great family. Um, to the alumni, I'm gonna look you in, the, in, in you know in the face, and and you know including football as well. I met a football, a former football player, and uh, you know like he said he played here, but I played football. I said no, you part of me too, um, you know. But to the basketball, former basketball players, I'm here for you. Call me if you need something. I think we need to invest. I'm not sure how much it was done in the past, uh, but it, but but if not much, it's gonna start, uh, you know, because you are part of this family as well. Um, you know, I think it's very important to include you guys because, you know, a lot of schools, you know, a lot of uh, former players feel alienated. And, you know, like I think that's something that, that I'm going to take charge and, and, you know, and take lead. And, you know, if I can get a bunch of T-shirts to give you, I will. If I can't, uh, you know, I'll give you some tickets to the games. We'll try to work it out. Um, uh, to the returning players, I know we don't have many of them, um, which is fine. Uh, don't panic. Uh, we're going to have some Jimmys and Joes in here. Uh, you know, we're going to have some really good players here. But to the returning players, just be ready. Just be ready to work. Uh, be ready to get better. Be ready to be an everyday dude. Uh, I hope you can handle that. If you can't, just let me know. Um, and I'll try my best to get you to handle that. Uh, you know, because we have goals here. Uh, you know, last year's team came, to, you know, with under a minute from going to an NCAA tournament, and that's a non-negotiable. We're going to try that, and you know, you know, and do better than that. Um, you know, so be ready. Uh, you know, as well as to the future demons. Uh, if you're not watching this, you're going to see this uh, because we're going to cut it up and send it to you as part of recruiting. But you be ready. <laughs> be ready for what you're getting into. Um, it, it's you know, and it's not a scare tactic at all. I'm not that type of coach. You know, but we're going to work. We're going to put on our hard hats, our Timberland boots, you know, and we're going to work. 
and you know, and we're going to be everyday guys. Um, uh, in closing, uh, you know, to everyone here watching and listening, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity and support. Uh, you have no idea what this means to me and my family. Um, you know, I can't promise anything regarding wins, uh, but I can promise that we will put out a product of players that you will enjoy watching uh, to represent our town and our community as well as our university. Uh, God bless everyone in here, you know, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. All right, for the media members, Brad, from our staff, wave your hand. Brad's got a mic, so if you guys have a question for Coach, that should work. And then once we get done here, we'll move to the back for the media, do some interviews. After they're done, he's all yours. <laughs> so, first question, Coach. Okay. Have mutual friends. Yes. Um, what in your Division One background are comparables? Are universities that you've worked at that you can draw upon that experience specifically for small town, uh, low major Division One, in a very competitive conference? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, one thing I, you know at this level that I've learned in, you know in my 13 years as an assistant coach is in you know on the recruiting trail you to, to any rock that you walk past you got to flip it over to see what's there um, you know there are a lot of good players that go under recruited um, you know for the purple and gold team down the road they don't have to do that um, but we do which is fine there's a lot of good players that go under recruited that have been all conference guys I, you know for example, there's a young man that's playing for the Chicago Bulls that I, that I uh, you know, coached and recruited uh, at Austin Peay. And he was actually signed to Austin Peay before I got there. Let me rephrase that. His name is Terry Taylor. He's in his second year in the NBA. But when we got the job, I, I had to re-recruit him to come back. Um, and he had one college offer uh, you know, out of high school. He was a Mr. Basketball in Kentucky. And... Um, you know, and that one offer was Austin Pete, And he, that young man went on to be a, a four-time first-team all-conference player in the Ohio Valley Conference and a two-time player of the year. And as a rookie, he averaged nine and six on, for the Pacers, and now he's with the Bulls. So my point is, uh, just being at that level, you have to be able to dissect and, and, and turn over every rock to get every, to bet every possible player and say, uh, go off the eye test, don't go off the paper test. You know, say, hey, that kid could play for me. And that's what we're going to do in this state, and that's what I've done, you know, for my 13 years, you know, and even at Tallahassee Community College. Um, you know, so I, I'm so excited for that opportunity, you know, and I think that level has helped me to not be surprised by anything, you know, coming into, in, you know, into being the head coach at, at uh, a Northwestern State University. Hopefully that answered you. Uh, to recruit locally, both you know, in Shreveport, in Natchitoches, in Alexandria, that I-49 corridor, how important is it to get some of the best kids that come out of those areas? It's very important because there's a lot of talent in this state. I, I, you know, I've recruited this state a lot throughout my years, believe it or not. This state, it's a big state. It's in the south. There are players. Um, you know, so why not? Uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't think there's anybody that can give me a reason why should I not recruit the state. Of 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 uh, you know of it being so so high and rich in talent, you know I'm not saying we're not going to go out of state. I'm not saying we're going to are not going to go out of the country, but yes, we're going to hit the ground running in this state. Uh, you know, and uh, per our conversation earlier, it obviously has to be the right fit. Um, you know, but we're going to recruit the state. I promise you that uh, they're going to know about us here. the paradigm of recruiting has changed particularly in the last five years um, because you did this before and uh, now you've got the portal NIL and uh, so many other factors that are very different than they were five ten years ago yeah great question this is something that I'm, I'm getting used to um, we you know you know even in my junior college days we we uh, you know got 
some players that shouldn't be there. Um, but it's because of the transfer portal. It's, 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 over, it's almost like a, you know, I'll be honest, it's almost like I show my city that I came from, New York City, it's overpopulated. So the portal's overpopulated. Um, you know, so you get kids that come down to junior college, you're like, well, you're too good, you shouldn't be here. But, you know, it's something that you have to just adapt to. Um, you know, when I was at Arkansas State, we had a young man named Norshad O'Meara. Okay, and uh, he is currently playing for Miami in the Final Four. I, I, you know, and I'll be honest, his only offer was Arkansas State. And, you know, as a freshman, he was the first team all conference. As a sophomore, he was player of the year. And then the NIL kicks in. And, you know, like he's not from here, but they worked something out with his country. And then he's down in Miami. And now I'm sure he's getting very well taken care of. So. It's just something you have to adapt to. Or you can complain about it all you want. If the people in Indianapolis don't change it, then I just got to stick with it. Have you talked to, to Kevin at all about uh, the NIL here and the opportunities to, uh, for players here? Yes, yes. Um, you know, Kevin's done a great job of uh, you know, of working that avenue. I don't know how much I could say in regard to that. Um, I do know he's working, you know, uh, on his side. And, you know, it, you know it's very promising. It, it, it helps in recruiting. Um, unfortunately, I can't say much to recruits. Um, but, but we have something to entice some young men to come here. I do know that. Uh, you know, so we're excited about that. And it, it's all about growth. Uh, it's all about growth and, and, and patience and understanding. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think we can get good players without it, you know. So it, it's just my confidence, and you know, I, it, it may come back to bite me. But that's how I feel. Good. So my question is: We do have some guys that are in the portal now. Are we doing anything to retain those guys and keep those guys here? Yes, great question. Um, I, you know, I reach out to everyone. Uh, you know, some are still on the fence. Some have obviously left. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be patient to some extent. And I'll tell you why. You know, because these are young men. Their heads are spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. Um, and, you know, at some point, I'm going to have to put the full court press because you got to move on. You don't want to miss out on a, another player. Uh, you know, but I'll be patient for that, you know, like the aspect that they're considering returning. Um, you know, and I've spoke to them about that. I say, hey, I would love to have you. If you choose to leave, I support you. I don't want you to. Um, but this is not, you know, a very unique situation. This is a lot different than, as he said, five, ten years ago. It's, it, just, it, it just is. Um, but it's just something you got to adapt to. I'll tell you, at, you know, at Tallahassee, you know, in my first year, we had a pretty decent year, won 21 games and, and made it to the state tournament. So everyone left. We had seven guys go Division I, and uh, I returned one guy this year, one. Um, and we had to bring in a whole new 14 more guys. Now, we had them in June so they can get to know each other, so they can get to, to bicker with each other and get it all out the way in the summer. So when September came, we can compete for championships, and it worked out. So it can be done here. It can be done. Um, you know, whether we like it or not, it's just, uh, it's just an unfortunate situation. You know, on the transfer portal, it's, it's the hot thing. But, um, you know, but we'll get some good players. But to answer your question, yes, I've been working that avenue as well. Thank you. Have you had with the players yet? And if so, you know, what have you told them, the guys that are still here? I have not. Uh, I met with, I'll take that back, I met with Amarion just for about a minute right before the press conference. Um, but, uh, but that's it. Um, and, um, you know, I'm going to meet with them after, you know, you know, for those that are here, you know, you know, I've talked to a couple that are, that are on campus or back home, um, you know, but my thing is looking a young man in his face, you know, and just expressing my vision, uh, and what I can do to help them, you know, achieve their goals as well. Because at the end of the day, it's not all about me. I, I'm up here for my press conference, but, but it's about these young men. So. You know, like I'm here to serve. If I expect them to serve me, I, I, you know, I want to serve them as well. Yeah. 
Go ahead, bring them, bring them. As, as fans, donors, uh, lovers of the, of, the, of the sport, like all of us here, I feel, I feel like it, when we came in the door, everybody was hugging each other. And happy <laughs> to see, like we're a huge family now. So uh, my question is from us, what do you need from us? What do you expect from us? I just need you guys to, uh, number one, to continue to support us. But most importantly, when my players get here and the current players that are here, just to love on them as much as you can. They are away from their mom and dads. Uh, you know, I can do but so much. I'm not around them as much. My assistants aren't around them as much. But you guys are so impactful on their growth. Um, you know, when these young men are, are, you know, are done playing, um, you know, so they're going to need jobs at some point. And uh, if you love on them, they won't leave here. Uh, and maybe you could help them somewhere in the state or somewhere where they are. But just be supportive. Just help us, you know, uh, uh, be parents to them, uh, you know, because they need that. There's a lot going on in this world, and, you know, and their brains are moving a mile a minute with the phones and, and you know, and just a lot of negative things. And, you know, so just uh, continue to, to support my program, um, you know, because your support helps us win. Uh, uh, please support Kevin and, 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 and my family. And, uh, you know, it, I mean, it'll be greatly, greatly appreciated. More, more, come on. <laughs> okay, here, no so. problem, no problem. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. All right, like we said, we'll uh, we'll let him get over there. We'll get some shots, get the family for a picture for sure. Kevin, picture time. Uh, then once again, once the media is done with him, we'll turn him loose. And uh, there's some refreshments in the back for everybody, so you can have a little snack uh, and get ready to meet our 11th head coach, Rick Cabrera.